Art tips from someone who is paying $12,000 to No, this can't be real. She's calm today. Could this be a glitch in the simulation? Yeah. What's going on guys? You probably can't see me right now because I'm blending in with my background today. But we're gonna take a look at some art tips on TikTok. You know I love making these videos and educating the babies out there, so let's do it. Alright, first up, we're talking about faces. I'm looking forward to this one. So most art tutorials will have these two means of drawing faces, and while I have nothing against it, personally I find it is very flat and doesn't quite get the 3D nature of how the human skull works. Instead, I like to start with these like blocky squares and you will see why in a second. But basically what you're going to use is you're going to use the guidelines you've created as a base here. And literally all I do is I connect up these lines. The eyes always lie on this line specifically and the nose goes about halfway from the eyes to the chin. Personally, I put the borderline on this line, but and the mouth rests approximately halfway between the nose and the chin. Oh boy. I'm all for people trying to find different methods to construct the head, but this right here, okay, the measurements. The line was drawn across the eyes, so I'm assuming that's an eye line. And then you place the nose halfway between the eye line and the chin. But that's gonna cause your character to have a really long nose because the halfway point between the brow line and the chin is where the nose sits. Most people's faces are divided into three relatively equal thirds between the forehead, the brow line and the nose, and the chin. Now remember guys, there's a distinct difference between the brow line and the eye line. There's a lot of real estate here. You, you, in this video, we're going to look at how to use different techniques to shade your own artwork. A cross-hatching technique is when you use lines that overlap each other to create darker shades. Cross-hatching was one of my favorite things to do, especially with uh, pen and ink drawings. If you want to do this, I highly recommend you do a lot of practice to try to get your lines as steady and even as possible because with cross-hatching, if your lines are unevenly spaced and if they're wobbly and wonky, then when you cross these lines together, you're going to get a very splotchy and messy kind of look. And when the dots are closer together, the shade looks darker, and vice versa for when they're apart. I hate stippling. You know why? Because if you have a drawing that's literally this big, and you try to stipple it, it's going to take you three whole business days. Blending is basically when you smudge all your pencil lines together, and it creates a really smooth texture. I don't know if it's just me, but I usually try to avoid smudging with my finger because it tends to create a very muddy look that doesn't match anything else that you put on the paper. And your finger usually has got like natural oils on it and it just makes the paper look all like weird and shiny. So if you do want to smudge, you can get like a little piece of newspaper or some kind of uh, paper smudging tool that's going to actually blend it out without applying all of your greasy bodily fluids onto the, the, the page. You better not be putting your bodily fluids onto your art. You, you, I'm watching you. Starting a new piece can be overwhelming and scary. Quickly sketching out the whole composition in one color eases that fear. Dude, look at those dogs. I guess this person is using the underpainting as a bit of a sketch layer, which is very smart. You always want to plan out your composition before you get into the small details. Especially in traditional art, sometimes it's good to put down a nice rich layer of warm underpainting like this so that when you're eventually painting over it with the final colors, some of this color actually shines through and gives your painting a nice rich colorful, warm appearance. I want to show you something that's a little awkward for me to share, but here it goes. This is one of the very first things I painted when I got my first ever watercolor supplies for my 26th birthday. Also, I painted this toaster for a watercolor class I took not long after that. Now it looks a little dull to me compared to this other watercolor toaster I painted about 15 years later. So my point is, every artist was a beginner at some point. If you're just starting out, please keep at it and enjoy your journey. Ooh. I mean, he kept it up for 15 years and look at where he is now. This is fantastic. Remember, the next time you catch yourself being mean to yourself, you tell yourself that every artist starts somewhere. And if you keep being mean to yourself, you're gonna end up like this guy right here. I will come find you and I will destroy you. Does your art look weird from far away? You know, you're doing a drawing, it looks great, but then you export it, maybe post it on your Instagram, and then from afar, it just looks off. I present to you the concept of thumbnail sketches. They're usually bare bones drawings of different compositions for your final piece. Give you a lot of options as to what you really want the direction to go in. These are used a lot by industry professionals. They really help the artists and other viewers look at the final piece and see if anything is missing. I love, love it. Thumbnail sketches are so underrated. They're a 
fantastic way to plan out your composition before you actually dive into it and make sure that your composition actually works. And one thing that I like to do when I'm drawing in Photoshop here is I like to have a navigator window open. It's basically like a tiny view of my painting and I can just glance over and make sure that the overall composition works. Simple. Three art commission tips. I hate art commissions. <laughs> Number one, take a deposit. I always offer 50% or they can pay the full amount if that's easier for them. You can set this to 50%, 25, whatever you're comfortable with. Two, don't be afraid to ask for better reference photos or more of them. The better the reference photo, a lot of the time the better the piece is going to be. And number three, don't undersell yourself. Have your limits and prices set, set your boundaries and don't let people take advantage of that. Yes sir, really, really good points here. Number one is you got to take a deposit. You, you get some money from them, okay? You Otherwise, who's to say they're not going to refuse to pay you after you're done your hard work? There's people out there. And if they're giving you doo-doo references, you make sure to ask for more because you don't want to draw something that doesn't match what they want just because their references were doo-doo. Drawing arms is similar to drawing chains. The simplified muscle groups connect by alternating directions similar to the chain links. You know what, that's really interesting because I've never thought about it like this before, but I'm glad you pointed it out. This is such a simple and easy way to memorize the directions in which the muscles should connect with each other. I like that. Well done. Here's an MS Paint tip I think is really helpful. With the eraser, you can change the color of something. Cool tip, but do you, do you guys use Microsoft Paint? Why, why would you do this? At, this? at that point, just drawing a sketchbook. Why would you, why? I'm gonna show you my favorite technique I learned in art school called blind contour drawing. You'll just need a pen and a piece of paper. Once you have your supplies, you're gonna close your eyes and put your pen near the middle of the paper. You will not lift your pen up at all as you try to draw a face. Remember, my eyes are closed, so I'm thinking of all the components of a face, like eyes, eyebrows, ears, dimples, nostrils, etc., and letting my pen flow between them. You can get really creative with this technique and make some awesome art. Ooh, look at those colors. Wow. Okay, Picasso, I like it. Back when I was in school, there's this fun thing we would do where uh, we would try to observe our classmates' faces and try to draw that in a blind contour. So you're not looking at your paper at all. You're not taking your pen off your paper and you're trying to draw their face. And it's fantastic because every time you look down at that final piece, you drew them extremely ugly. Please stop making journeys from a box. No, I'm sorry, but it's easy. And I'm stupid. All right, so let's clarify this. There's nothing wrong with sketchy lines. It's a very valid art style. It's okay to draw messy. But I think what this person is referring to is the technique of chicken scratching, which is when you're really unsure of where to put a line, so you just kind of like make it all fuzzy and, and incomprehensible. Chicken scratching should be avoided, but messy lines and sketchy lines is completely fine. I mean, my line art is messy. Stop sharpening your pencils like this and start doing this because instead of a standard pencil, you're going to have a lot more lead to work with. This helps you shade a lot easier, be more gestural in your lines, and you're still able to get that fine detail that you would have gotten with other pencil. Help this helps. Okay, so it seems like a lot of people out there get very salty when uh, people tell them how to sharpen their pencils, but this is actually valid. This tip is valid. The main benefit of sharpening your pencils like that is it gives you a large lead surface to work with. So you can hold your pencil like this and cover a very large area with a few strokes. And the second advantage for me personally is it doesn't allow you to press too hard because otherwise that lead would break and when you press too hard with a lead pencil that's when you get that weird shiny kind of indent on the paper and it just doesn't look good in the final result we're getting so many traditional art tips today what's going on is this the lord's sign to tell me to show the traditional artists a little bit more love because they don't have the undo button they don't have liquify they have to buy their materials they have to set up they have to clean up they have to <laughs> look I'm sorry. You know those drawing tutorials that go like, if you want to draw a face, start with a circle, then a line down the center. Personally, I never found those helpful. Even if I follow them correctly, the heads just look like balloons. Every now and then, I practice drawing skulls from reference, and it's such satisfying work. Because even if I only spend 20 minutes drawing, I know I'm developing muscle memory around as close to the real thing as I can. It's also not as difficult and more fun than you might think. Okay, you know what? I, I hear you. I, I know what you're saying, but sometimes it's helpful to know the big shapes and the measurements that make up the head that you're trying to draw. That is, if you're trying to draw anatomically correct and you're trying to make your character 
look as believable as possible. When you're drawing something like this and you're just trying to be loose, you're trying to be free, you're trying to be illustrative, you don't necessarily need to know all the measurements. When you look at these skulls, are they anatomically correct? Absolutely not. But maybe to you, to the artist, it doesn't matter. And that's the beautiful thing about art. You can draw however you want. But if you're trying to draw anatomically correct, you better put down your measurements. You, you, you. <laughs> Guys, I fell for this one. This is a TikTok by Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare, you had me. You had me in the first half. I didn't know this was somebody trying to sell me something. Shame on you guys. If, you, if you're if you watching this and you want to sponsor this channel, hit me up. <laughs> art tips from someone who is paying $12,000 to learn how to do art good, part two. No, this can't be real. She's calm today. Could this be a glitch in the simulation? Don't be afraid of making bad drawings. You have to make bad drawings now so that you can make good drawings later. That's called learning. Yes, sir, you tell them. You gotta make bad drawings to eventually be able to make good drawings. Now, let me tell you baby something. I make bad drawings all the time. I make pieces that I don't end up posting because I didn't like it. You make these and you learn from these so that eventually your good pieces can be even more gooder. Hi there, are you a digital artist who is I starting out? I am, I am. I am, start? yes. Then You could have at least put one or two of the tips in this video, right? Come on, you sneaky little sh**. I thought you were ruining your drawing on purpose, but it turns out you saved it in the end. Uh, but I don't know why you turned the comments off. What, 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 what happened in the comment section? Were people bullying each other? What? I Oh my f this video took like two years off my life. Someone tell me why I've heard each and every one of these phrases before. You should have drawn me. Is that supposed to be you? Draw me. Why'd you put that there? So, shut the f Anyways, guys, I cannot bear to look at this TikTok any longer because I. All right, you know what? This is cool. Let's learn how to draw a tree. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Start with a trunk, and we're going to make four or five main branches. Each of those branches should divide into a Y at the top. After that, I'm going to add a bunch of circles lightly on top of the tree. This is going to create the basic shape of the leaves. Then I'll go through with this kind of squiggly pattern to make the basic outline of it. After that, I'm going to add some on the background and under the tree, and we're going to shade that part in. And then I'm going to add some lines to the trunk and the branches to give it a little texture. And then we just add a little grass and outline the trunk and get yourself a tree. Dude, what the heck? That's a nice tree, dude. Wow. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our tips on TikTok. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you maybe learned something new along the way. We definitely had some questionable tips in this one. But with that being said, if you guys wanna see more art content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next video. Should we do a roast? Maybe I'll roast you guys. <laughs> this shirt was not a good idea. I'm like fully camouflaged. Look at that. I am, you can't even see me. I'm like a floating head. My body is invisible. You can't see me. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? Why are you watching this? The one thing in your life that's gonna be spent and that you're never gonna get back is your time. And you're spending your time watching me do this. You should be questioning your life right now.